Hello and welcome to St John's at Home. I wanted to have a quick chat to you. We are undergoing, as you know, a time of transition. Back in March, we went through that enormous shock of everything being in person. You came into church, we received you in the church and we worshipped. And that changed in one week. In one week, everything went online. And that was a really shocking time for us all. And we've got used to that a little bit. But as lockdown has lifted and some of the restrictions have lifted, we have been able to start to consider opening churches again. But we can't do that as quickly as we went into lockdown. We can't come out that quickly. And so I just wanted to reflect a little bit to you what that's looking like from our angle and what that means for you as part of the worshipping community of St John's. Because what we're doing is we're going to be returning slowly. This is a gentle transition back to a different way of worshipping, of worshipping at St John's. We've actually learned some truths during this time. We have had quite a few experiences and a lot of those have added to and, rich and given a richer depth to our lives of faith. And so rather than see those as negative things we want to lose and we want to go back to the old way of living, we want to transition into a much more profound way of worshipping God. So as we carry those things we've gained and we've learned and those new truths which we hold uh, more dear to us maybe, I want to ask you to consider what is our faith? I want to have a little look at what it actually means to us and what the foundations of it are. But before I say that, before I discuss that, I just want to share with you that we cannot return to the way things were. That is a given. Unfortunately, we cannot just open churches and guarantee that they will be safe for everyone. We have a new worshipping community and that community is online, it is on paper and it will be in person. All three people are part of the same community of St John's and you are all of equal importance. So what we are trying to imagine as a leadership team and as, uh, as your rector, I'm trying to build a picture of what that will look like and how you can each engage with it safely but fully that you can enjoy your worship as fully as possible within the medium that you have chosen, whether in person, whether on paper or whether online. So what I want us to think about is what, what that faith actually looks like. And to begin with, I want to uh, share a conversation I had with a dear friend this week about God as host. When we receive bread, we often refer to it as the host. So we have the wine and the host. But another way of thinking about the host is that if you imagine those lovely um, smiley faces that greet you at the door, the, the church wardens, occasionally me, um, but people who greet you at the door are hosts. But let's think about a wonderful party, a banquet. Shall we call it a banquet? And you have received an invitation. That invitation came to you, it had your name on it, and it was somebody who wanted you to come to this banquet. And when you arrive at this banquet, there they are waiting at the door, and they're so thrilled to see you, and they invite you in, and they receive you into this place. And then throughout the time, they're attentive to you, they make sure that you're comfortable, that you're happy, that you can hear, that you can participate as much as you want to. And then when you leave, they tell you they were so pleased that you were there. That is what God is doing now in this new community which we are a part of. St John's at home, St John's in the church, on paper and online is all part of St John's at home. And our host is God himself. And so let us think about what it is that he welcomes us to. 
when I was a little girl, we were, uh, I, I was part of the community of Christchurch Christ Church Cathedral, Nassau, Bahamas. And the dean of the cathedral put us through our paces as we learned our catechisms for confirmation. And we had to learn the creed off by heart. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. Let's consider what that means for us today. What on earth does it mean? I'm not a catholic is what a lot of people say. But what that means is I believe in one so one church, not all the different denominations, but one church, the Church of Jesus Christ, the church which Jesus Christ is the head of. I believe in that. I believe in a holy church. Years ago, I was the chaplain at the uh, at Portsmouth's only Church of England Secondary School Charter Academy, and there was very little understanding of faith within the school. And so when I was asked to put together a station for prayer as part of um, the Pentecost uh, services at the cathedral, I struggled for what I was going to ask them to do. And I tripped over the story of Moses and the burning bush. And I told them, a group of them, this story and told them that I wanted to create a burning bush with leaves having prayers on. And I explained to them about Moses uh, being told by God, take off your shoes for you stand on holy ground. I was really charmed. They absolutely loved this story. They really, really engaged with it and they understood. And one of them said, so when we come to see you, Reverend Rona, does that mean that we are standing on holy ground? And I said, yes, because that's the intention. You are intending to come and see, to speak to God. And that's what we're doing together is we're trying to seek God. And so we're standing on holy ground. So that's what holy means. It means set apart. It means that whether you click on your computer and click on the link, whether you pick up those papers that have been posted through your door or whether you walk through the doors of the church, you have received God's invitation and you are now standing on holy ground because that's your intention. And, apost and one holy Catholic. So Catholic is with a small C. I'm not telling you you have to be a Catholic denomination. I'm saying that you are part of the universal church. That church which I worshipped at in, in Christ Church Cathedral in Nassau, Bahamas, is the same church that we worship at here in St John the Evangelist in Merrow. It's the same church you worship at in your kitchen, in your sitting room, in your garden, wherever it is you are engaging with this service. That's what Catholic means. So when you see me serving um, at presiding at the Eucharist on your screen, it doesn't mean you're excluded. It means you're part of that Catholic Church because you have received that invitation. And although you see it through a different medium from the people sitting in front of me, or whether you're reading about it, you're part of that one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Apostolic. If you remember a few weeks ago, I preached about this that the apostles sat at the feet of Jesus and on the day of Pentecost, he sent them out. You are becoming apostles because you have heard and you have learned and I have heard and I have learned God's word. And he's asking us to now be apostles and to tell people about this life transforming world which we can live in, which is God's kingdom. And so I encourage you, think about that faith, which is a foundation of your life, I hope. Think about that faith, even if you're right at the beginning of that journey, because God has sent you this invitation to watch, to listen, to read, to turn up, to just be part of. Accept the invitation and know that God as host welcomes you, whatever medium you receive. So that's all that I'm going to say for today. 
but I would like to invite you to come back. Come back in whichever format you would like to on a Wednesday because I'm going to be recording six versions of a discussion about the Eucharist. I'm taking these all from the Pilgrim course of the Eucharist so that we can have this opportunity as we transition to actually reflect on what the Eucharist means to each one of us. There will be six separate weeks, they will be recorded and you can catch up with them afterwards. But please do join me and spend time reflecting on what the Eucharist, which means literally Thanksgiving, means to you and to us as a community of one holy Catholic and apostolic church. So please join me on subsequent weeks and thank you for joining me today. And for now, I pray God's richest blessings on you, on all those you love, this day and always. Amen.